Hey, this is Danny from Pico. With VR, we can grab things, we can poke buttons, we can interact with things we never could do before in gaming. But sometimes you just need to a quick menu access, get to as fast and easy as you can. I still use a button to access menus, especially with quick prototypes, because it's nice, quick, and easy. So in this video, we'll start by removing our old SDK, upgrading it to the newest SDK binder menu button, create a menu UI, and it's something to the menu so it's not just plain, and then give the menu a smooth follow. Welcome back to Button Inputs 2. First thing is to update our SDK to the latest version. One way to do this is by going to Package Manager and click Remove, but with the way Unity is set up, you can't remove a package that has .dl files. If you do, you run into some errors. So what you can do here is right click on Assets, open into Explorer, Go ahead and close Unity so we can actually delete the SDK now because they have the DL files. Go ahead and delete the SDK. And then since we deleted the SDK this way, we have to go to the package.json and go ahead and remove where it says uh, Pico. I'll highlight it here for you. Be something like this right here. Go ahead and remove that. Since we'll be updating it, once we put in a new package, uh, Unity will automatically update this file. Go ahead and drag and drop our SDK. Right now, the newest version is 2.20. Go ahead and grab this from our Pico developer website. Once you drop the SDK, go ahead and open Unity back up and I'll meet you back on the Pico button inputs scene. Now I want to work in a new scene. Let's call it button inputs to, since we're working with menus, add in menu as well. And we want to bind our primary button to, on our left controller as our menu button, right? So let's go to XR Origin object, open the Input Action Manager, open the asset. Under the Pico XR Action Map we created earlier, or whatever you want, we will add our new Menu Open Action button. Let's call it Menu Button. Action type would be Button, Binding Path. Let's set it to our, our Pico controller on the left one, and we'll set it to our primary button. Go ahead and save. We go ahead and just use the button input script we made before. Go ahead and double click and open that up. Let's add in some headers here just to you know organize things a little bit more. We'll call this input action components. Then we'll just call the other section just game components so we can add in our Unity components and things like that. Go ahead and copy this and just rename it menu button. Let's go ahead and go down. Let's copy the method since pretty much the same thing here. And let's just call this menu toggle. For the menu toggle, a couple ways I like to do this. First one is we're going to need a Boolean value and our game object for our menu window. So we'll go ahead and get a game object. We'll call it menu window. This will handle opening and closing the window itself. And we're going to use a Boolean value to see if the window, we want the window to actually be active or not active. And we'll be switching this with a not operator every single time we press the uh, menu button, which is are going to be on the primary button on the left controller. So we'll set it as the menu button equals the opposite of what it is. So if it's off right now, you activate it, it will be true, and then we'll set that true value to the menu window gamma object. Now the, the second way, basically do the same thing, but we're gonna use a Unity method that Unity has for us. Unity has a um, property, basically, that you can check if a game object is actually active in your scene or not. We'll just do menu window dot active self. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Instead of a bully value, we're gonna use the value that Unity already gives us and we'll take the opposite of that value every single time and we'll set that value to our window status. So the window will be, if it's active, we'll turn it off. If it's off, we'll turn it back on. The, I like the second way, it's a little bit cleaner, very simple. So since we're doing the second way, we're going to actually don't need the Boolean value. So we'll go ahead and uh, delete these comments here. 
go up and delete the boolean value. Next, we actually have to subscribe to the button events. So go menu button dot action dot started. Remember, action uh, dot started is called once every single time the button is activated. We'll subscribe to it. Anything we subscribe, we need to describe. So do the same thing. You just, just add a little minus sign right here. And that should be it. Next, we want to use Text Mesh Pro. So go ahead and import that into our project. Go ahead in Windows, Text Mesh Pro, import resources. We can finally create our menu. So let's start with the canvas. Go to UI, open up and add in a canvas. Let's call it menu container just because I'll be adding a few things inside here. I'll go ahead and add an image that will be used as our background. I'll just call it menu BG. So if, with the menu, anything in VR actually needs to be in world space. So make sure you set the uh, render mode to world space here. Let's set our position, lower that, and size about 100 by 100. But definitely you have to remember to scale it down so it's not so large, so you can actually still see it. Let's move it somewhere where we can kind of see what we're kind of working with. Don't worry too much about the position. We're going to set that in code later on. So go ahead and go to the menu here. Uh, about 50, 75. You can change the the sizing of your uh, your menu any way you like it. Let's set the color black, set the opacity down a little bit. And let's add in a text mesh pro text. As you see here, the text is actually facing the wrong way. So go ahead and go to our parent container, rotate it about 180 degrees should be just fine. Let's uh, scale down our text so it actually fits in the menu so we can actually see it. Scale it down to 0.1 and let's set the alignment to the top here. Let's call it menu. And the container should be about like 50 by 25. That should be about fine. Let's duplicate our menu text and move it down, lock it to your left. And let's rename it game time, uh, duplicate it again, add it to and just move it to the right side. I put it as a child of the other one just so like if I move the game time, the, 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 um, the timer actually moves it with it as well. I think the game time is a little bit too close, so let's adjust the uh, side. Let's just move it over just a little bit here. And just make sure the text is actually centered. Go ahead and set that by setting the alignment there. So let's make the game timer script. Go ahead and right click, create your script. Let's call it game timer. Open it up here. So we're going to be taking some kind of text object. So we want to be using the text mesh pro text object. So public text mesh pro UGI to come. Let's call it timer text. And then we need some kind of float value to actually carry the time that we'll be uh, keeping count. We want to keep count of, let's say, to timer, when the game starts, we'll keep a timer. To get that time, actually, uh, we'll do current time plus equals to time dot delta time. This will help us keep track of the time when the game starts. Not your actual time that you are, but actually the time when the application starts. So to set that timer text, by adding a string with the um, zero here, we'll actually have whole numbers instead of actually full values there for the timer text. Let's put this whole in a different method. Let's call it update game time. And this should be it. Let's create in a Pico XR game object. Let's create a new one. Let's call it timer. Put our script in here, nice and organized. And for the timer text asset, go ahead and add in the uh, timer text to the reference component there and press play check it and we have whole numbers adding up once we have our menu container ready what i want to do is actually move the menu to our camera offset let's start by actually just adding it to our main camera just so we can kind of see what it's going to be looking like as you can tell for the main camera view down there, it is a little bit farther away. So what I like to do is start with having the Z value at 1.5, then you can just adjust it from there. So go ahead and test it out. Press play. 
then we'll go switch back to the scene while it plays active and we're gonna move the menu, the main camera here. So if you move and then the camera skips or anything like that, you're gonna notice that the, the, the window is gonna skip too. So if you move your head too fast or you have VR headset on, the, if you have something locked to your face, like a menu, if you move something, it's gonna uh, see the skips there. So to kind of go around that, we can actually uh, alert the position and have the menu actually follow a point. So if you, you turn too fast, it skips or anything like that, the menu uh, will always be a smooth transition from point to point. So let's create a new game object. Let's call it uh, menu window alert. Let's set the position to 0.2 and the Z value to 1.5. Now we're gonna create a new script. Let's call it uh, window follow. And for this one, this is gonna allow the window to follow that position, the game object that's the child of the main camera. Let's call it, take a public transform, call it alert point. I'm gonna notes for you guys. Position offset in front of the VR camera. Again, this, usually I set it the, the distance like 1.5 on the Z value. The alert speed is how fast the window will follow this point, so, May, I usually start maybe 15 or 10 to have like a little slight little delay so it looks kind of cool. And since it's kind of a physics moving thing, I always add into a fixed update. Transform that position here. And we're gonna place this script under whatever window we want to kind of follow and to kind of move around here. So vector3.lerp, get the position, it'll be from point A to point B, and the time will be delta time times our alert speed. This will have that smooth transition from point to point, but you know, if you turn or rotate your head, so you also have to get the uh, rotation as well. So a little more, see when this falls here. Let's set it to 10. I'd like to think of 10 the better speed for a little more noticeable. All right, same thing for rotation. Instead of a linear interpretation, it will be the quaternion that has a slurp value here. Transform, get a grab our rotation, and we'll be trying to copy the rotation that is our look point here. That way, if we turn or move ahead, the, the window actually uh, turns with us. All right, this should be set. Save it, let's go back, and let's add that script to our menu container. Kind of window follow there. And the alert point is the menu alert point. And let's go ahead and test it. Now I'm gonna move the, uh, the camera here, and you'll notice that there's a little, slight little delay on the little menu and it's gonna follow that point. Perfect, that's exactly the behavior we want. All right, that should be it for all the coding. Let's connect everything we've done so far. The menu button and the menu window. The menu window, it's the menu container we had made before. And let's wanna start with the menu off, so let's turn off the menu container for now and the uh, input action reference, the one that we actually made in the action map. You can actually get the name, that's the decrement button, decrement menu button, all right? So go ahead and drag that reference into our menu button in our script. And let's go ahead and save. Let's go ahead and check our settings. Remember, this is a new scene, so we have to make sure we actually uh, after we save, add in the scene that we want to actually build, remove the scene that we don't want, add our old current scene, make sure we're connected to our Pico device when we're trying to build it, or you want to do a pre-live preview. Let's double check our settings here and make sure Pico is active because we switch SDKs. And... We can also check player, make sure you're on IPL level 29, correct scripting back in, make sure, definitely make sure you're on ARM64, and that's the basics for now, we go a deeper dive into more optimization in the Unity settings in another video.
All right, go ahead and build it or do a live preview. Okay, let's test what it looks like in game. As I move my head, there's a nice, nice little delay. Turn off, turn on with the button here. You can notice that when I turn it off and move, the, the, the menu looks like it's flying past me because when we turn it off, it's no longer moving that window. We turn it back on, it's gonna uh, quickly follow that point and rush to that window there. We can actually fix that. Let's go back to Unity. All right, back in Unity, go ahead and go back to our button inputs. What we're turning off is our menu container, and the menu container actually has our UI follow script on there, so if you turn it off, it's not gonna work. So let's take the game object in menu BG, let's call it menu window, and we'll be adding that to the Pico button inputs instead of what we had before. So we're no longer using the menu container, which is turn off just the UI window itself. And I noticed that my menu was still active, so let's go back into the code so I had to fix that. So menu window dot set active, just set it to false right on start so the, the window, the menu window always starts off. So let's go back to the final test. Let's move our head. Great. And move left, you turn back on, it appears right in front of you, and have a nice little delay follow there. Awesome. Thanks for following along. Hope you guys learned a couple things or two. See you guys next time.